Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week because there's new knives on the table in front of me. They've just hit our shelves, and I'm excited about it. So let's get into it. All right, the reason I'm so excited is honestly this first knife right here, just launched earlier this week. It is the Victorinox Venture series. And it looks maybe deceptively simple, but this knife is a case study in why it's so hard to do simple knives really well. And when I say it's a case study, it's a case study because they did pretty much everything right with this knife. Let me take you through it. First of all, the steel. 14C28N from Sandvik. Great stuff, good and tough material for an outdoors minded knife like this. And take that coupled with the construction and the price of this knife. At about 75 bucks for the standard version, this is designed to go right up there with stuff like Mora's Garberg knife. Although this offers you sort of a flat ground alternative blade to that Scandi ground knife. Really, really excellent stuff. The standard version at that $75 mark, you can get it in a black, green, or red handle, or you can get the pro version here, which is only available in black. That comes in at 115 bucks. Comes with one difference on the knife and the rest of the uh, differences are constrained to the sheath, but you can see we have a bow drill divot here in the handle. That's only on the pro version. So when you have the knife in your sheath, only do this with the knife in the sheath, you can use this as the bearing block for a spindle fire, a bow drill fire. Nice little touch right there. I'll get to the sheath here in a minute. Let's stick with the knife for now. Now to the blade itself, as mentioned, 14C28 and plenty tough, just over four inches long, about four and an eighth. Simple looking drop point shape, but as mentioned, everything feels so right about this. Three and a half millimeters on the spine thickness with the full flat grind. So it's a little bit over an eighth of an inch, very appropriate thickness for this size of knife. And when you combine it with that nice slicey geometry, even better. You've got some jimping here out towards the tip, not really designed so much, I don't think for fingertip use, but more for if you have something you're whittling and you wanna use the tip for guiding the tip with your thumb right there, a little extra traction. The spine itself is also crisp to throw strikes or throw sparks from a fire steel, which is a great little addition for a bushcrafty or even survival style knife. And I would argue that this is more than just a little bushcraft knife. It goes into the survival realm a little bit, I think. And then the heel of the edge is coming all the way back to the handle. You can get maximum power right there and fine control with the heel and no wasted space. You're getting all the edge possible on that blade. Very nice but a four inch drop point blade with a full flat grind does everything. Whether you wanna use this just around camp, do some food prep, some whittling, whether you're heading out into the bush, doing some hunting with it, it's gonna do that well too. And with this geometry and steel selection, you should be able to uh, baton wood with it, split stuff in an emergency, no problem, I think. The handles, likewise, excellent. Nice contouring, that's the advantage, of course, of injection molding, you can get a complex shape while keeping the price down. The feel in the hand, guys, it's excellent. Enough of a finger guard to keep you safe right there. Finger scallops on each side for pinch grips, whether you're doing a, uh, a forward or edge down pinch grip or doing stuff like a chest lever grip, that's gonna be really nice. And then full length tang protruding here at the back, crispy edged as well for more sp or scraping or what I've always found this to be really helpful for if you're making a, uh, a spoon or a bowl or a cup out there in the wild or just around the campfire and you're looking for something to screw around doing. When you uh, kind of burn out the hollow of a spoon or a cup or something like that, this is great for scraping out the char in those sorts of situations. We've also got a standard quarter inch hex cut out there that can drive standard quarter inch hex stuff. Again, do it with the sheath uh, in, uh, installed, of course. And there's also an available uh, toolkit, which I don't have here, that one of the things it includes is a, uh, a spade bit It'll allow you to uh, drill or bore some solid holes through some stuff, which is pretty cool. One more little detail on the handle. We will have to get really close up on this. The fine texture you see right here, which is embedded into the hard plastic. This is not a, a rubbery grip at all, which is good in my opinion. It's not gonna snag too much and raise hot spots as you use it. The hard, uh, hard material there is actually a better thing. But you have just enough texture on these 
raised sections and a fine texture that is in fact the Victorinox shield and the, the letters that make up the word Victorinox in kind of a random pattern. Really cool. The sheath for the pro version is right here. It is ambidextrous, which is nice. Either side, throwing that knife in there, no problem. You don't even have to switch anything out, which is cool. The pro version comes with a fire steel there at the back. And it also, oh, let me put that back in the right way. Uh, it also has uh, kind of trading on some of Victorinox's part catalog. You have the pressurized ballpoint pen refill and tweezers that you can find in some of the Swiss Army pocket knives, which is kind of a cool thing there. The toolkit that is available can wrap around this particular sheath and be carried on person just like that. As for carry on the belt, you've got two loops right here for standard carry. You also have a TechLock compatible hole pattern, which is nice. So one more hidden feature on the sheath right here if I unhook it, it does have some drain holes here at the bottom, uh, but Felix Immler, who, you know, YouTube Swiss Army Knife Guru actually had a big hand in helping design this knife. He demonstrated this over the weekend. Cover up the hole with your finger and you can use this as a, uh, a small bellows tube, essentially to uh, help stoke your fire, which is kind of neat too. But this piece and this strap is included with this pro model here. But these two pieces together are what comprises the standard edition sheath. And it simply pulls together like that. So again, completely ambidextrous, simple loop for carry there on your belt, nice and lightweight and very easy to keep out of the way. It doesn't take up a ton of space on your belt is what I mean to say there. Have I spent enough time on this? I I'm really excited about this. It, it is, it really is a hard thing to do an inexpensive or at least affordably priced simple knife as well as this. Really, really impressive stuff, I dig it. One more Victorinox this week and it is actually a Swiss Army knife. I should mention, actually before moving on, <laughs> Thomas thought we were done with the fixed blade, but Dang. not yet. Well, we only have one fixed blade on the table so I had to spend extra time on it today because this week there's only the one. Longest video on record. This is actually made in Switzerland. You can see here on the back, Swiss made. So other uh, fixed blades in Victorinox's lineup in the past have been made uh, in Spain, which you can still get. Those are made by, uh, I think, Muela for them. But these are made right alongside the Swiss Army knives, like this. This is the Ranger 55 limited edition Damasteel version for 2023, 385 bucks. Quite a bit more dear than the standard version, but you do get powder metal Damascus steel right here, that Damasteel stuff. Should give you performance on par with something like CPM 154 because that's essentially what it is. Technically it's RWL 34. We've been through this many times. It's all the same stuff, just different people make it. Handles also see a nice upgrade. This is a beige linen micarta, almost like a bone texture or ivory like color, I mean. It's really nice. It feels very, very good. You've got that great looking blade button actuated liner lock, which makes that a finger safe locking mechanism. I always appreciate that. And then the standard tools on this model are present and accounted for. You have your cap lifter with flathead screwdriver and wire stripper notch. You've got your wood saw, excellent cutting wood saw for a pocket size saw, I should add. And your can opener with also your bit, flathead bit on the tip that will also work in some Phillips bits. And on the back side, you've got your corkscrew, which can hold some of their accessories or open your wine bottles and a nice sharpenable awl. Very nice model. If you just want it for performance, you can spend quite a bit less than the 385, but if you want something that's just plain cool or collectible, this is the way to go. So in keeping with the theme of uh, Victorinox's thin slicey blades, we've got some more nice thin blades here to talk about. This is a Kershaw Dividend and you may be thinking that's not very new because honestly, it looks like another version of this knife, but this is another version of this knife. Milled aluminum handle scales, much like the 20 CV bladed version of this, which is upgraded from the original smooth handled aluminum scales of the M390 version of this. But this is more exciting. This is a Magna Cut bladed version of this excellent knife. Very, very cool. Price on it is about 140 bucks. You've got that aluminum, as I mentioned, very, very slim in the pocket, super easy to carry every day. Deep carry pocket clip for position. 
deep carry pocket clip actually. So if you're a tip down fan, I know there's not a ton of options for you folks anymore in terms of new product releases at the very least, this will work quite well for you and on the left side as well. Liner lock for safety, speed safe assisted opening for consistent action. And then let's talk about magna cut and how great it is on a very thin blade like this. I did mention thin, right? Magna cut is very stainless. It holds an edge a great good deal long while of a time. Check that in the verb verbulator. It's probably right. No, it's wrong. But it holds an edge for a good long time. And it is very tough as well, which toughness on a very thin blade like this, especially one with a very acute point. Very good thing indeed, because it can stand up to a little more without having to resort to a thicker blade. And we don't like thicker blades here, do we? Actually, thicker blades are fine, but thin blades on a pocket knife, especially this size, I'm a big fan of because they're super, super efficient, especially when you add that high flat grind and the swedge on this knife, it's just going to move through material quite nicely and be very precise thanks to that modified Warncliffe style tip as well. Really great choice for EDC, American made, good stuff. Uh, if you don't quite have 140 bucks though, and you want something similar, we can say this is kind of similar, I guess. Uh, in terms of blade characteristics, I got this right here, the Pyrite Alt from CJRB. Actually, the edge condition themselves are very, very close to each other, very similar, in fact. A little bit more meat going on behind it, but that's just a subtler difference in this case. New versions of this available, including this green micarta handled version, which can be had with a black or a stone washed blade, I believe. Uh, 3.1 inches long and price on these about $52. So you can get almost three of these for the price of that Magna Cut. And if you're on a budget these days, I do understand, believe me. The steel is RPM nine, so it's got good performance. That is a powder metal product here at that range. Should give you some pretty darn good edge retention. Nice and slicey there too. Not too thick, high flat grind, very acute point, very nice. We also have a button lock on this knife, which means you can flick it open or flick it closed in a finger safe manner, which is quite nice. Works well for lefties too. And we do in fact have a reversible deep carry pocket clip here to keep things friendly for both sides. It's just been a great model, whether you talk about the drop point version or the alt version here with the modified Warncliffe. Very successful and it's easy to see why. And that's probably why they've done did a bigger version right here. The large pyrite in the uh, original drop point blade style, 3.7 inches, otherwise kind of the same profile, same spec sheet, button lock, G10, micarta, or stainless steel handles on this version, just like the original deep carry pocket clip that is reversible, just bigger and only like five, six bucks more. This is 56.95 right now on our site. That is a lot of knife for the money. Great, great shape too. I love the drop point shape of the pyrite. Again, nice and thin. I actually don't think they made the blade stock any thicker, but it is taller. So the grind line has been, or the top of the grind has been brought up. The actual kind of thin cross section, the thinnest cutting geometry here is going to be even more efficient probably than the standard sized version. That's pretty cool. That's one way to do it. Some other folks might have gone with a thicker steel, made it a bit beefier but they're kind of sticking with what makes the pyrite great in the first place. And that is just great, efficient, versatile cutting. And you got it right here. Stone washed finish on this one. Very, very attractive. So let's keep it going with uh, some more finger safe locks. Vosteed has entered the ring with their crossbar lock on a couple models here this week. This is the Corsair, an all new model as far as I'm aware. 69 bucks for this three and a quarter inch nitro V blade. Very uh, similar to stuff like AEBL, maybe a little bit more stainless than that, but other similar characteristics. Nice and tough, very stable edges and holds an edge a good long time. Great versatile drop point shape here too. I like it. High flat grind, appropriately thin or appropriately thick blade stock, depending how you want to uh, take it. But that's just a very nice everyday blade as far as I'm concerned. Several handles. This is a black micarta and for folks out there who like their black micarta to be truly black. They don't like a lot of gray in their black micarta. This is going to be a treat for you. That is a very excellent black micarta product right there. 
copper pivot ring, reversible pocket clip, not quite deep carry. Interestingly, before I get on to the uh, mechanism itself, this knife comes with a standoff here, but it also comes with a small backspacer that you could choose to install if you wish that brings the spine side of the handle back a little further before coming down. So you get a tiny bit more handle there if you want. Not that this is lacking, I think it feels pretty good. I do have slightly larger than average hands, but all four of my fingers still fit on that handle without too much trouble. I dig it. Speaking of feeling in the hand, contouring to the scales is especially nice. And on to the crossbar lock. How does it feel? I think my smile says it all. It's got a real kind of, trying to find a way to describe it really. It's got a, a kind of deliberate feel. It's certainly free floating. It, it works really well, but maybe it's the spring tension. It's a little more maybe than I'm used to on some knives, but not excessively so. Just creates a, a feeling of confidence, quite honestly. It feels super solidly put together. Ball bearings in the pivot here, no uh, phosphor bronze washers. I know that's always kind of the first question I wanna know when dealing with these new crossbar lock products is which one are you dealing with? Not, not that either are bad or good, they each are just a little bit different. So now you know. We have also got for interesting, a little bit less money, 10 bucks less money in fact, we have the Raccoon crossbar locking knife as opposed to the uh, the button lock version. Super popular knife, always has been ever since they introduced it. Sandvix 14C28N steel on this knife, which is also like Nitro V, kind of a spinoff of AEBL steel. It's interesting. Performance levels probably aren't gonna be too far off between these two knives, but you could save yourself 10 bucks getting the Raccoon, interesting. You don't get the contoured scales, but the handle does still feel pretty good. Four of my fingers on there, no problem. Right there on the kick up at the back and plenty of space around the pivot if you wanted to choke up. Not quite a finger choil in its kind of construction or styling, but functions kind of similarly. Lets you get right up there behind the edge. This is the brown Micarta. There are several other Micartas and G10s as well. The yellow is actually uh, pretty nice too, but I didn't want to put that in the video because it offends some people sometimes. Some people think it's a little garish and I get that. So the brown is probably more broadly acceptable. Let me know in the comments. It feels good, feels great. The Raccoon is a great knife. The blade shape there does everything you want your daily carry pocket knife to do. That's been the theme for most of these knives we've talked about so far. So I don't need to uh, belabor that anymore. Full high flat grind, great, good stuff, very good stuff. Let's say you want a more premium crossbar locking knife though. Check this out. This is a new brand. This is Olone or Olone. I'm actually not sure how it's pronounced. This is the Goat AXL and it's fantastic. And these are actually made by Riot. This is Riot's first crossbar lock that I'm aware of and it feels really good. It's got kind of that same, similar to the Vostita actually, a little bit more spring tension to the blade. I'm needing a little bit more wrist to effectively uh, do the wrist flick there. Maybe that'll break in a little bit. Uh, this looks like washers in the pivot as opposed to ball bearings. So maybe a little less susceptible to grit, but can sometimes need a little bit of break in time. The blade is three and a half inches long, M390 steel, hand rubbed horizontal grained finish that looks exceptional, full flat grind. Great, great useful blade shape, not too thick, like all of it there, but Plenty of strength in there, even though it's not super thick. And that's backed up a little bit by the handles themselves. There's a little bit of girth to this. It is contoured and a little bit thicker as opposed to something like, well, for example, in a similar sort of price range, the Tactile Rock Wall. I have this here by way of comparison, which is also contoured, but starts out thinner. This doesn't have the same kind of hand filling grip. They went for more of a svelte, easier to carry knife here. Whereas this Olone, Olone, whatever you want to call it, feels a little more kind of substantial. They, they've given it more to start with. It also reminds me of another knife that I happen to be carrying today. That is the Sabenza. Actually a lot a bit. It has similar similarities to the profile, of course, and kind of a similar mission. Like the Sabenza, it has a slightly thicker, slightly girthier feel in the hand, especially the, uh, the 
inlaid versions like this, and yet it's just a great blade. It's not overbuilt where it doesn't need to be, just where it needs to be to work exceptionally well. Shall I move on? Pricing on these uh, for Micarta inlaid versions, you're looking at about $255. This version right here with the snakeskin gold fat carbon coming in at $299 right now. You've got a milled pocket clip, single screw right there, matching material for the backspacer, which is really nice. Everything about it is just really freaking nice. Kind of, you know, even more so than the tactile, I would say, is kind of if you've been waiting for a crossbar locking alternative to the Sebenza, the tactile is worth a look, but this, I think, especially is worth your attention. Speaking of Riot made knives, we have the Birch Tree Blade Works Euclid right here a production version of the custom Michael Birch models, uh, starting at $350 for Micarta or carbon fiber, uh, $380 for fat carbon inlaid versions. Blade M390, just over three, about three and an eighth of an inch long, unique blade shape to it. It's, what do we want to call it? Drop spear. We won't even bother to call it anything. It's a blade. It works great. <laughs> M390 steel, kind of a mid-height flat grind on it, a little bit thicker here. This has a bit more of a kind of beefy feel in the hand than most of the stuff, all the stuff we've looked at so far. Has that more of that kind of pocket tank style of personality to it than some other stuff. Still feels good though. Flipping action is great. Feel in the hand, has all four of my fingers just, let's compare that to the Vosti just for kicks. Very similar, very similar actually. Similar shapes going on too. Milled pocket clip, hidden lanyard point. It's kind of got all the greatest hits that seem to come with most Riot made knives these days. And the reason is because they all work really well. They're all nicely considered things. I dig it. Compact, but powerful for sure. Speaking of power, how about a new version of the Cold Steel Engage, their Atlas locking knife. This is the large Engage at the three and a half inch size, comes in about 165, now available with the Tonto blade shape. If you're unfamiliar with the Atlas lock, it is functions similarly to something like the Demco's Shark Lock, even though underneath the skin it is different and it is mounted further back. I think it works on this size of knife. As you get smaller, it gets a little more awkward, but on this larger size of knife, it works just fine. Finger safe, nice and strong, great feeling handle made out of G10. Again, I mentioned I do have slightly larger than average hands and I have just enough space on that handle. So if you, if you know you've got really big hands, this might be a little tight for you. So keep that in mind. You can of course choke up if you want, get your index finger out in front of that substantial finger guard, actually offers a real significant amount of pr protection. But when you are up there, just be aware the sharpened edge does come through the finger choil there, so be careful. The Tonto blade is hollow ground at the back to keep the edge thinner, but flat at the tip for more strength. And really this knife is about strength, kind of like a lot of classic cold steel products that come with the triad lock, we'll get to that in a minute. That's what it's all about, and it does a good job. I won't spend too much more time on this because we've talked about the, uh, the other version of this knife before. It feels good. It works hard. How about one of those triad locking knives? This is the Counterpoint XL fully serrated. That is ready to rip, my goodness. Any sort of fibrous material especially stands no chance against these serrations. Affordable knife too, even though you've got a six inch blade, just under a hundred bucks, OS 10 steel, saber height flat grind, and a significant swedge meeting there along the, uh, the center line, so it gives it a bit of a dagger-like profile. It's a two and a two and three quarters length handle, at least for my, my hand size. But you've got plenty of handle there, whether you're choking up for a heavier saw or choking back for a little more reach, whether for utilitarian or self-defense tasks, you can do that with this knife. Reversible clip, left or right, tip up, and the triad lock. Looks like a lock back, has more mechanical stuff inside that alters the geometry a little bit, makes it a little bit stronger, makes it last longer, it kind of wears more evenly over time, self-adjusting, solid, 
solid stuff. If that's too much for you, this, uh, this size, you can also get it in a much more pocket friendly four inch bladed size, which is still plenty big, but there you go. Next up, we have a new blade shape for the Flytanium Talisong Z. It is a Tonto blade and it looks really cool. I like, here, here's what I like. It is hard to do a Balasong blade that stands out from the crowd because you're constrained to a pretty narrow type of width. So you, you don't have a lot of room to play with, but I think they've done something here that is eye catching for sure. $310 for this knife. Blade is four and a half inches of AEBL. It is crowned along the spine to make it more comfortable when contacting your finger, when you're flipping it open or closed. And speaking of which, it feels super nice and smooth. Channel milled aluminum handles, rounded on the outside with a very auditorily satisfying knurled texture there. Check it out. Oh, it's not doing it now. <laughs> I dig that. Very, very nice. The pivots are phosphor bronze washers and hand tuned bushings right there. And the other thing this comes with is the Bally boot right here. No latch as you can see. So if you wanted to carry this in your pocket, the boot is going to keep it from opening up accidentally or in a bag, even Maybe if you're not carrying it in your pocket, if you have it in your backpack or something, that'll keep it safe. But then when it comes time to be doing your tricks and all of that, no latch to get in the way. I know a lot of folks prefer that these days. Next up, we got a couple of karambits here on the uh, latter part of the video. The Tactical Toucan. Might be one of my favorite, definitely my favorite name for a knife this week. <laughs> I like it. Uh, this is a Jake Hoback knife, and this is made uh, for them by We Knives, who are doing great OEM work. Price on this, about $285. you have got a 2.7 inch 20 CV blade, nice American made steel right there compound ground as well, which you don't see too often uh, on folding karambits as far as I'm aware anyway. Hollow ground at the back, so if you need to use this for stuff, uh, you know, if you're not using this for self-defense uses, most knives are never going to be used thusly. Keeps the edge thinner there, and then flat ground at the tip, again, for more strength and again supports the, uh, the more delicate tip a little more nicely than a hollow grind might in this case. Very, very cool looking as well. You can get kind of a bronzed version of this knife or this blue titanium version right here. The finger ring actually nestles back into a slot in the handle right there because you can see it going kind of underneath, but you can't see it from the inside. It, it, there must be a, you know, a little slot in there to keep it captive, which is kind of neat. It feels pretty good in the hand. The finger ring, as you can see, is nice and wide, which is going to spread uh, or distribute forces out a little more broadly, so it's more comfortable when impacting a target. And speaking of uses such as that, impacting a target, it is set up for right side inverted grip carry, which is exactly what you want on a karambit like this. And as you can see as well, it is set up with a kind of triangular thumb stud arrangement, which while not quite as effective at waving or pocket deploying uh, the knife, it can do it. It just requires a little bit of a uh, different touch than a more aggressive hook style. And we have a button lock, which means you can do that too, which is always fun. Reversible milled pocket clip, hadn't mentioned that yet, which lays nice and flat out of the way when you're gripping the knife. Very, very cool. But if you don't wanna mess with a folding karambit, we have the Philo Blade Works Halson karambit right here. And it is all edge, baby. Everywhere you look, pretty much. Uh, these are Nitro V steel. These come in about $455 and they are wicked. G10 for the handles, a few different colors can be had right now. And I mentioned this is all edge, right? Just, just look at it, count them for me. One, two, three, four, not this little section right here, four different edge sections so you can catch them coming or going with this blade. And let's not pretend this is anything else but a kind of defensive scenario knife. This is not a utility knife. Although we should challenge myself to come up with some utility uses for this. It's like a great sandwich spreader. <laughs> I, wasn't, I was gonna go food prep, but not sandwich spreader. You could rock on a cutting board, do some uh, herb mincing like that maybe. I wouldn't, but you could if you, <laughs> if you wanted to. 
They're really, really solid feeling and really, really wicked looking. They come with a Kydex sheath with a Dots style tech lock. There we go. Ready to go right on the back so you can reorient that whichever way you like to carry it to your preferences. All right, next up, we got two knives that kind of marry old with new. And the first is a new version of the Otter from Terrain 365, the Otter Flip AT, I should mention. Low tech with the handles. We've got nice classic stag. Looks so cool. <laughs> like it looks really cool and feels like those old school, warm, comfortable handles you may be familiar with. So, so nice. And yet the blade material is teravantium. It's not steel. It's a dendritic cobalt material, very hard, very long lasting on the edge. And even though you don't have a, uh, a bolster here styling wise, this is Spearpoint Barlow all the way. Great, great stuff. $339 for this, but you get two handles. I didn't mention the other handles yet, Thomas. Not yet. They actually include in the packaging a set of green micarta handle scales. How cool is that? So you could swap things out if you're worried or if you just want to swap things out and change things up for a little bit. That's really, really cool of them. As for the action on that three inch blade, it's great. You've got ball bearings down there. It flips wonderfully. Actually, let's talk about the blade a little bit more. Three inch spear point, appropriate thickness on the stock, full flat grind or pretty much full flat grind. Just a great pocket knife. Great pocket knife blade shape that is classic and works. Liner lock to keep it in place. Last but not least, you can even front flip this knife a little bit. You can see the jimping there, just barely. See, I, gotta, I have to kind of get it started and then flick it the rest of the way, but it can be done, which is pretty nice. If you don't have $339 though, check out these new Baron Sons Rancher Sideliners. There you go, $69.95 for these at this point in time. You've got a D2 blade, far more pedestrian stuff than your Teravantium, but still very solid stuff for sure. Tool steel, gonna work great. High polished finish, which is Thomas's favorite thing to film. High polished bolsters here as well with stag bone handles. So these are not actual stag, it's jigged bone designed to mimic the look of stag. But you can also get this with Coco Bolo, and I believe, I think G10 as well. Yeah, black G10, if you'd rather have a different look. But you've also got this, that classic old meets new right here. You've got ball bearings in the pivot here with a liner lock and a flipper. That works very well. You're not gonna be uh, front flipping this knife, I dare say. I'm gonna challenge myself. You won't. No, it's not, it's not gonna work, that's not happening. And you have a deep carry pocket clip right there too. Honestly, it feels really, really good. And last but not least, two more all modern folders. These are these are no nods to the old school here. This is a uh, a Bob Trezola production knife, not a not a custom. You're not getting a custom Trezola for just under eighty bucks. But before I get into the rest of it, it's the ATCF Light. And judging by the construction I'm seeing here, I would not be at all surprised to learn. Uh, that Civivi, we and Civivi are making these for Mr. Bob T himself, which is to say the quality is quite good for this price range. It's gonna work out for you quite well, I think. 2.9 inch blade Nitro V steel. We've already talked about why that's good stuff today. Great drop point blade shape here too. Black G10 for this version with a liner lock and ball bearings in the pivot. We've got a deep carry pocket clip, which is mounted inside the handle right there and reversible. So very easy and a nice clean look. As for the action, flips nice. Let's see, can I do with this fuller here a reverse flick? I have not tried it yet. You can do that too. It's really nice. It's a little bit smaller than I anticipated just looking at photos on the website. So keep that in mind. You're dealing with a sub three inch knife here, but it's a great little shape. It looks great and it's gonna work well too. And last but not least, everything I said, like everything today I've said, it's just gonna work well. That's the theme of the day. I stand by it. I stand by it, but still. Anyway, last but not least, we have a Sen Cut, which is, of course, the, uh, the budgetiest 
sub, or a subsidiary of Wii Knife Company. You got Sencut, then Civivi, then Wii. Uh, this is the Jubal Front Flipper coming in at just over 37 bucks. And for $37, Sencut continues to amaze. For, for the little amount of money you have to pay for these knives, they truly are, truly fantastic. Three inch blade, D2 steel, excellent, perfect Warncliffe blade shape to it there. Very, very precise, very, very acute, ready for deft little cuts. And yeah, it's, it's just excellent. Full flat grind on that bad boy. Single position pocket clip, not deep carry, but the way it tapers down right there, that would be a little more difficult to pull off anyway. I like the, uh, the more subtle implementation here provided by that. You've got a liner lock and you've got ball bearings in the pivot and this is a front flipper. And it's a really small front flipper, so my slightly larger than average hands might have slightly more problems with it than normal. But as you can see, I got it. Second try and third try. So there you go. Really cool. Uh, purple G10 here, other handle colors and blade finishes are available. But for another great option for a kind of executive styled Warncliffe blade, there's not a whole lot out there. Here's one. All right, that's all I've got to show you today. Let me know what you thought in the comments and to get your hands on one for yourself, check out the links in the description. Those will take you to knifecenter.com where thanks to our Knife Awards program, you can earn up to 5% back towards future knife purchases. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center and that's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.